Good evening. Good evening, everyone. I want to talk to you about a very beautiful story that is happening to me. It's a story of love with Grandma Saint Anne, with heaven, but mostly Grandma Saint Anne and many other saints. It all started on June 3, 1990, almost five years ago. So, I'm going to talk to you about so many beautiful things. You'll see that it comes from heaven. In all this, I feel so small. There has been a lot of signs. I have asked Grandma for signs to see if it's true, because I felt that it was impossible and that I was unable to do this mission. It was by those signs that I've noticed that these messages from heaven were true. And everything that Grandma St. Anne said happened. It's true that it's a lifetime story, especially since the age of 13. She, was, she has prepared me. She has protected me in every situation that I had to pass through in my life. And one day, I noticed that it was so huge, I didn't understand. I always thought it would stop. I knew that I loved Grandma Saint Anne, that I helped her to be loved by others. I thought one day it would stop. Well, no, it doesn't stop when it comes from heaven. More and more there are healings and there are conversions. It's almost like the mission of Brother André with Saint Joseph's oil. He was at the beginning of the century, so it was a bit easier for him because people had fear of God. Not that they were scared of God, they had fear of to offend him. Me, I'm coming at the end of the century with Grandma Saint Anne, our good Saint Anne. There's a lot of good reasons why we call her our good Saint Anne. Just thinking about her makes me happy. And it's with her oil. And one day she said, I want you to open your house. Last year, on August 7, the year of the family, you know, she came. She waited until the year of the family to reunite couples. And she said to me, now your house will be my house. I will send you my little children. You will receive them. You'll talk to them. You'll listen and apply my oil on them. And me, I'll do the rest. I thought I understood wrong. But no. I did not. The next morning, I had two young women visiting me at home. And it's always like that now. I received them, and it's here that I received them, with the presence of Grandma Saint Anne. I tell you, she's present with me. You know, in all that, we are so small, we cannot imagine that it will last much longer. But it does. But it's not for me. I have nothing. It's for my brothers and sisters. So I had to forget about myself completely, to go everywhere in the province of Quebec, outside, to talk about what Grandma Saint Anne gave me. Because when she told me, I want you to find a, a mission for me, it's a mission divided in three parts, Saint Anne's evening, Saint Anne's meetings, and the answers of Saint Anne. And there are healings and conversions into each one of those parts. And now, even by video, there are healings. Many, you'll see all along the evening, how there are healings, how many people send me letters. They are healed while looking at the video, which is blessed directly from heaven. So it's sure that there were visions to be able to do this mission. And two years ago, the first time, yes, the first time I saw my big vision to continue in this mission, it was on October 13th, 1991. So three of them came to tell me, keep going. It comes from heaven. We will protect you everywhere you go. So it was Jesus. Imagine, he's so handsome. He was with Grandma St. Anne. I did ask her to see one of her finger or half of it, one minute or 30 seconds, if she wants me to continue in this mission, because it was too heavy for me. And I saw her entirely. 
I assure you that it's quite a grammar that we have. And we have to be confident to ask many, her many things. You know that in heaven, the saints are there to answer our requests, to help us. We are here on earth, we wait, we don't have any power. It's their duty, they have the power. And Jesus, yes, it's him who does all the miracles. He's allowed to pass by his mother or his grandmother. So the 1st of September, 1993, it's the Virgin Mary who brought me into a church, the Immaculate Conception. So she took me to the altar. She showed me all my documents, all at the altar. And it was so beautiful, I explained it further on during the night, the way she went to visit me. And she said, keep going, don't be afraid. And I said, why, why isn't it Grandma who's visiting me? She answered, it's a graciousness of my mother to advise you so that you can pursue your mission. And don't be afraid, we are with you. And two years ago, I was visited by St. Anthony of Padua. He came to advise me, to support me. He presented me the infant Jesus. It was a vision. We see very clearly in a vision. So the next day, it was St. Teresa of the child Jesus. She presented me roses. Imagine. And she comforted me because I was lonely where I was. I had been away for five months in Florida. I missed my children. And to comfort me, she said, don't worry, we organize your mission on earth. It was so beautiful. Finally, it's really like the mission of Brother André. And three months ago, June 12th, the last vision I had was our Lady of the Sacred Heart. She came to tell me to continue, that she would protect me everywhere I would go. It was marvelous, this vision of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. She had a message for her little children. She said, go and tell my children to convert themselves profoundly, a sincere and profound conversion to Jesus' heart that is the mission of Grandma St. Anne. She wants to bring her children into the heart of Jesus. It's such a mission. I think it's a mission from heaven, a mission of compassion, of tenderness, of mercy. She said to me one day when she came on June 3rd, this mission is to comfort my children and to heal them because I want absolutely, yes, I want them happy on earth because you know there's nothing free on earth, but we are created for happiness. We are created to become saints. It takes our yes of love. We have to be motivated to say yes and to follow what Jesus came to tell us. It's very easy. We just have to let ourselves be loved, accepting God's will to let ourselves be loved. So it's at the age of 13 that everything really began in this mission. And at 20, from 15 to 20, I was living in a convent. I was a nun, believing that it was forever. I was so happy at that time. And she took me out to make me realize this mission. She protected me during those five years. I was protected in all the events that took place in my life. I had to pass through all those events to be able to understand my brothers and sisters. And I gave everything. I owe nothing. It's all for God's glory. Now I want to show you where it started all. That beautiful story of love even though it had already begun before. She has been preparing me, but really, when it started, it's when she came to talk to me through inner locution. I will talk to you about that beautiful story of love, how it's all started. Everything started here in my room in June 3, 1990. I was just coming back from Saint Anne de Beaupré from my meeting of supporter of Saint Anne because I have promised to support Saint Anne and I have worked 22 years for Saint Anne because I've been healed from paralysis. 
And just when I arrived here, when I was changing clothes in my bedroom here, I felt all numb. I said, what's going on? I thought I'd paralyzed again because I had been through it before. Suddenly, I heard a voice. Grandma Saint Anne talked to me. Don't be afraid. It's your grandma who talks to you. So she talked to me for about an hour. Imagine, she told me, I want you to create a mission for me. So this mission is divided in three parts. She explained it to me, everything that will happen. It is Saint Anne's evenings, Saint Anne's meetings, and the answer of Saint Anne through letters that I will receive and letters that I'll send back. So imagine, I had so many questions to ask. During one hour, I had plenty of time to ask what was going on. After that, I refused to accept because it was too big for me. It was almost like a bomb falling on me. Imagine telling me these things, how I've tried to know what will happen. How could that mission be? After all those explanations, I was so nervous that each time that I asked a question, I was walking around my bed like this all the time. I said to myself, what's going on? I couldn't hear anything with my ears. So I said, Grandma, why do you want me to do that? There were three important things she, w she had to accomplish. Help her daughter Mary to save souls, not to take her place, but to save souls with her daughter Mary. The second thing she told me was, I want to get out of the basilica to heal my little children who are sick. It's sure that she's still in the basilica, imagine. But for those who can't go there, third thing she said, I want to be loved 12 months a year, imagine. So I asked her, why? Uh, will I be criticized? She answered me clearly about everything. So after almost an hour of talking to me, she saw that I was very nervous and that I didn't want to accept. She said, sit down, sit down on your bed. So I sat on my bed and I could feel her in front of me on the chair, but I couldn't see her at that moment. So. She said, listen, I know that I'm asking, what I'm asking you is very big, it's a big mission, and I know it is hard enough, but I will give you all you need to accomplish that mission. When I give something, I give everything that goes with. But I said, Grandma, I need good health. As for your health, you'll be in good health. And since 1990, I've never been sick. And I answer my letters until three in the morning, and then I go to bed and I sleep for three hours only each day. And I wake up each morning without being tired. I wish you that not to be tired anymore. It's fantastic. So she promised me a beautiful gift. She said, listen to me. I know it's hard what I'm asking you, but when our father will decide to call you back in his kingdom, it's me who will wait for you at the door. I will carry you in my arms, and I will bring you to my grandson, Jesus. Imagine such a beautiful gift for, from her. But just the same, I thought about everyone who will question me or criticize me, but I accepted. I've said my yes of love because I had faith, and it is by obedience and humility that I do this mission because of my love for Jesus, for heaven, and everything that she told me in visions and in inner locutions occurred exactly the way she told me. The important things is to save souls. So I will explain to you what I do when I answer letters. The third thing that Grandma Saint Anne asked me to do, the answers of Saint Anne. So I've got my statue of Saint Anne here, who inspire me, who tells me what I must write to all those women who suffer and to all those persons who write to me. Sometimes I answer letters until three o'clock in the morning. I answer about five or six letters a day, and it has been almost a year that I receive letters. There's some in that basket here, and I answer with the inspiration of Grandma Saint Anne. Surely it's the Holy Spirit and it's Jesus who does it all. It is for his glory. 
I go to bed after that and I sleep three hours and I wake up in very good shape to start again, to continue, to clean my house too, and to do everything I have to do. You know, there have been healings through these letters. I can read you some for an hour. Healings. It's through faith and hope, and it is through letting go to let us be loved. We must live a day at a time. And those letters are really inspired when I write them, because no two problems are the same. It's not a show, and neither is a Lonely Hearts Collins. None of that. It's the soul. Yes, the soul, which is concerned. We cure our body in many ways at the estheticians, at the hairdressers. Do we think of taking care of our soul? So I'm just a little doctor, very small, who try to understand my brothers and sisters with a hard diploma that Jesus gave me. It's not education. I finished school in grade eight, but when I answer my letters, Grandma St. Anne blessed them before sending them away. So there are a lot of prayer on them and also on those that I receive. They are prayers every day on those letters. Imagine how it's important here by the letters. It is some mission. I have to let go to be able to continue. I want to introduce you to the Pilgrim Saint Anne. You know that there is a Pilgrim Virgin. So there was that man who called me one day and told me, listen, it would be nice to have a Pilgrim Saint Anne. I said, oh no, I already see too many things. Forget it. So three days after, I went to Saint Grégoire with where Brother Zandri was born. When I was talking during Saint Anne's evening, a man who just had bought a statue from Saint Anne for himself was inspired to give it to me. So up to now, I travel with the statue across the province. And everywhere she wants to go, I bring my pilgrim, Saint Anne, with me. And look what she does, our Saint Anne. She's wonderful, our grandma, Saint Anne. Look at all these healings. Listen to me. We can't have healings like that without reason. Look at all those letters. And over here, it's full of testimonies. Me, I'm so small in that. And I let go, I abandon myself. Grandma Saint Anne does all that with the power she's got in heaven on, on the heart of her grandson, Jesus. It's sure it is Jesus who does all the miracles, but she is there to help us pass through our way to keep going on the road. So she's such a grandma. You'll know her better now because we will meet again. We will go to Laura Godreau's manor. Imagine that my grandmother, by graciousness of Grandma St. Anne, my grandmother's name on my father's side was Laura Godreau, and nobody knew it. It's incredible how much she gives to me.